Wow, seriously, what a year 2024 has been for Collingwood, particularly given we're off the back of a, a flag in 2023 in excruciating fashion. I use that word because there was a lot of pain up until the final siren of that grand final that we we finally got, got to grace another premiership. I think that was Pendle's... It was the longest gap between premiership uh, visits for a player, for Saidi and Pendles. I think 13, 13 years. It's the longest gap. And just, just the time to reflect. I feel like this is a great time to reflect as a fan base, just to check in and, and smell the flowers and understand where we're at as a club. Obviously, yes, things aren't going very well on the field necessarily at the moment. Take the good with the bad, as a lot of people have mentioned in the comment section. Not many people get to see your their team play in a flag. St Kilda's, Fremantle still waiting. So there and, and Carlton have had their gaps and so have other teams. So there is that moment just to sit back and, and really soak in it for a little bit, despite the adversities that we're going through right now. But yeah, I guess if we bring our attention to the the start of the year. We start zero and three, and the, the media was heckling Collingwood like crazy. And it was it was warranted. Were some of the things they said right? Yes, in retrospect, yes. I think a lot of us were thinking the same thing: Premiership hangover, not hungry for the ball, not hungry to hunt the opposition. Maybe, maybe a bit complacent as to how well teams would adapt to the way Collingwood have or had played in 2023. Because what we did this year, or tried to do this year, didn't look much different to what we did last year. Yeah, maybe we developed more of a forward half game, but was that by design? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not too sure. So we're 0-3, and and then we we fight hard back, very hard. I think we end up being 8-3, I think. Or something, something positive, right? Uh, we, we got to a point where we'd set ourselves up for a top four finish. We we draw against the, the, the Dockers. And I just remember, it's like a, a a butterfly effect almost where we had that decision that Matt Nichols made against Lockie Sullivan in that Fremantle game. And I feel like from there, it's just been a steady decline. And I guess the bottom of the barrel was that Hawthorne game. So we're talking top four. We didn't have a. We had a whole bunch of injuries, so really, everything made sense to suggest that Collingwood were just going to get better, and really be primed for the final series. That hasn't happened. We brought players in under Dunn, maybe Pendle's still nursing a bit of a bicep, Dugowie still having issues with his abdominal, his groin, whatever it may be, he's dealing with something. So it's been. It's been a bit of a head scratcher because we've brought in all these players in mixed days and whatnot as well, and it hasn't worked out unfortunately. And I said in the the review for the Hawthorne game, it's sometimes it's it's not just personnel, or it isn't personnel, depending on the context, right? Like I feel like we're in a situation right now where systematically we're failing right now. We've been found out. There's intangibles there that we're never going to be able to measure. That's why it's so mind-boggling and confusing and frustrating at times because you, you ask what's wrong. I can tell you, I can tell you statistically what's, what's going wrong, but why are we there? There's things that proceed and occur before getting to why we're not moving the ball well and why teams are moving the ball well against us, unbothered, untethered. So... Bring that, let's, let's bring our attention to today's, the reason why we're doing today's video, or part of the reason, is to talk about the game against Richmond on Sunday. Game 399 for Scott Pendlebury. So it's very important. that If that's not enough motivation to go into a game, to win game 399 for Pendles, to take in some some energy, some some confidence against Carlton, who are a premiership fancy next week. So that's going to be huge. And I would love to see the boys get up. It's just all about, look, mathematically, we're not out, okay? So that helps. Mathematically, there is still a chance that we make the finals. But 
the team needs to cling on to things on a week-to-week basis now to get them going throughout the week. That's the biggest challenge. I just want to see our team not fold. Don't fold. Play to the end. Doesn't matter. Like, there's no point in tanking per se because our pick is with our first round pick is now with Fremantle. So even if we lose, it's not going to really benefit us on the draft table. I'm not saying I'd pr- I'd want that if that was possible. I'd, I'd prefer we win. We're a winning club. We're a, we have a winning culture. So yeah, that's that's what I would love to. That's how I would love the Pies to approach this game. Really use that motivation. We've got some injuries, of course. Injuries have been a, a common theme, and and is never really something that is a consistent theme in a team's journey to a flag in a single season. I feel like we just had too much volatility, so that's another thing that we're going to have to accept, and that's the way it is. But Sullivan, sorry, not Sullivan, Schultz will hopefully be in against the Tigers. And then Mason Cox will be in as well, hopefully. He played VFL. You're looking at Kruger, who's obviously got that concussion. So Cox is a is a straight swap. And then I think Sullivan maybe comes out for Schultz. I'm not sure if I'm missing anyone else. Maybe Ned Long. I don't know. But I think it might be Sullivan in this case. I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit, for, bit more from Ned Long. I feel like we've seen quite a bit from Lockie Sullivan. And maybe we just put him to the, to the side for now. Nestle him and, and let hit, let Sullivan get through another AFL level preseason and see where that can take his game in the in the midst of the context uh, contest next year. Hey, and who knows? Like, I wonder how much of an impact it has when you don't have someone like Tom Mitchell to mirror your game off at training. I'm talking about Lockie Sullivan because Tom Mitchell is what Lockie Sullivan wants to be and wants to do, and I don't. I think that's made it call me crazy, but I'm I'm thinking really outside of the the square here. But I think it makes it very difficult for Sullivan to improve his game when he hasn't got someone like Tom Mitchell out there on the field on a day to day basis. So that's what I that's what I think about that one. Um, and then yeah, like I said, Kruger, I just just inconsistency throughout his whole career with injuries. So I'm hoping Krugs can get back, finish the last couple of games on a high note. He's been really positive. A real shining light in the last eight weeks for Collingwood. So hopefully he recovers and we can get him back on the field and, and get another preseason under Big Krugs because he is definitely a part of Collingwood's future the way it looks right now. As far as last time Collingwood Richmond met, they they met in the preseason this year in that one or one time preseason game leading into the, the season and Collingwood won. And I think it was off the back of a really good quarter and a half which is what Collingwood are known for, to really turn on the Jets offensively in, in the in a quarter, a quarter and a half, and then, yeah, steady up and, and and shut down shop in the back line. And that's what happened in that that game. And then before that, as far as a competitive game is concerned, we hadn't, haven't played Richmond since March last year. So I'm not going to get into that at all, really. One, because it's so irrelevant. And two... Guys, I'm putting a lot of my eggs in the Scott Pendlebury documentary basket, so I'm trying to reserve as much energy with work and documentaries and everything else in life. I'm trying to make sure the balance is right. I haven't been able to do a couple of shows, the Pie Performers, the Pies Footy Show, so I do apologize, but I'm, I'm, I've just got to pick my battles, and I really, really, really want to get out this Pendlebury documentary on Sunday to lead into that really exciting week against Carlton. Anyways, what I'd like to see, whether it be against Richmond or the next five weeks, I want to see TJ get a game, Harry Demetia and Big Roo. They're on the top three of my wish list when it comes to players I'd like to bleed in a little bit more. Big Roo had two goals against Carlton in the VFL. I watched him play against Geelong, was very impressive. Give him a game. I think Darcy Cameron needs some sort of spell in the ruck, and I think Big Roo, whether he's ready or not in the ruck, is probably a com- another conversation, but... Just get him in. Just get in that experience, I think. And Dean Matera as well, would love that. TJ would be more accepting if he doesn't play because we've seen him before. And when he played against Geelong in the VFL, he didn't necessarily scream out, I want, I deserve an opportunity at AFL level right now. So that's okay. That's okay. Maybe next year. We'll see. And then Darcy Moore forward at some point. Get some confidence back into the man. I feel so. He's shot. He's shot. He's finished at the moment. Playing like a finished Shot, deprived, bereft of confidence, nothing. Get him into the forward line. He knows He knows where the two big sticks are. 
let him let him enjoy himself a little bit. Let let go a little bit in these last five games for the big Darcy Moore. Can Josh Dacos play on a half back flank? We saw what Nick Dacos has done in the past. We were a, a premiership side with Nick Dacos off the half back flank and, and taking those kick ins. Why can't Josh Dacos do the same? I mentioned this four to six weeks ago that this could be something we could entertain. We've got options on the wing. We already have the Harvey Harrison. We have Steel Sidebottom. We have Lipinski. We have players that can roll through there to accommodate for Josh Dacos going to the halfback flank. And it's been a massive issue not being able to generate scores from our defensive half. We're averaging 29 points per game right now, which is below AFL average. And last year, we were sitting at 40 points per game, which was the AFL best. And that was the linchpin of our game. And teams have figured it out. We're, we're, losing, we're losing clearance and the contested ball a lot more in the last five matches relative to where we were maybe eight, nine weeks ago. We are talking about Collingwood being a top four contested possession clearance side. So while that's not working as well, if it's not just Josh Dacos who goes to the halfback flank, why can't Nick Dacos just go back there? Like, we're already struggling in the middle. I understand it could be worse if Nick Dacos is taken out, but just ro- maybe just rotate Nick Dacos off the halfback flank. Why Why fix something that wasn't broken? Nick Dacos off the half-back flank. Yes, he's, he's a gun and he, he's, his career belongs in the midfield, but on a needs basis right now, he probably needs to play a little bit off the half-back flank and help out John Noble, still side bottom, Di Mattia whenever he comes in, Jeremy Howe, Breda Maynard, those, those pl- types of players. And... Yeah, I mean, we're not going to lose much if we put Nick Dacos off the half-back flank because Richmond are the worst side when it comes to clearance and contested possessions on an average basis. So if we can't beat Richmond in the middle with, without Nick Dacos in there, then we've got bigger problems to worry about in the future. Can we try and add a kick mark game to our bow? We've got fast footy, we've got knock it forward, we've got play long down the line, use the wings... But can we can we chip our way up and you know get to the halfway line and then perhaps get the handball receives in? Get the because I feel like at the moment we're getting our handball receives off our, at the off the half back flank and we're just being completely nullified and, and stopped in our tracks every single time. So if we can add something different, Hawthorne moved the ball against us far too easily. Essendon did the same, Geelong did the same, Gold Coast did the same. So there's, there's, there's a speed issue as well, clearly. We won't talk about the speed just right now because there's veterans that... It hurts, it hurts my heart to talk about them in a retiring fashion. So I'm going to steer clear of that for this video because we've got a special 400-game milestone coming up soon. So let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. But yeah, let's see out the year. Don't check out. Pendles 400 in just a couple of weeks. Look forward to that. It's a massive occasion. Celebrate it. The Tigers, are, like I said, they're, they're struggling themselves, but it's a big occasion this Sunday. It always is between Collingwood and Richmond. They're going to bring the best out of us. We're still not mathematically out of the equation. So let's see how we go. Go Pies.